Hey there, I am back with another deck review, and today we're looking at the Cursed and the Crooked from Marianne Larson. Fairy tales of the Disney variety are well known for their general cheeriness and ultimate happy endings. Rapunzel escapes the tower, Snow White finds her prince charming, and Belle discovers true love. But the stories throughout history were not always as bright. And perhaps few other sources document that darker legacy better than the efforts of the German brothers Jacob and Willem Grimm back in the 1800s, when the pair sought to publish a collection of popular folk tales. Today we know their book is the famed Grimm Fairy Tales, but in its time, the first edition was actually given a pretty lukewarm reception, in part because of the cruel and even violent themes that ran through the stories. It wasn't until those same tales were sanitized and brightened up a bit that the stories finally gained broader appeal. And it's in the spirit of those original darker fairy tales that were told throughout the ages that Marianne brings us her latest deck, The Cursed and the Crooked. Now, if you've seen Marianne's previous decks with Shadows of London and The Circus, you know she's an amazing designer and artist, especially with those darker themes. So very excited to check this one out in more detail. But first, what's the story behind The Cursed and the Crooked? Well, it tells the tale of a baron who was out hunting a legendary stag that was said to be roaming the forest that surrounded his keep. And one day he finally found the animal, shot and killed it, not knowing that the beast was actually the king of the forest and that the death would unleash a powerful curse on both him and the rest of the forest. The baron found his mind and body absorbed into the ground and the trees and animals slowly began to change into the twisted versions of their previous self. A mixture of good and evil throughout the forest, it became this sort of magical and mysterious place that was haunted with the curse of the stag and the baron. So kind of a classic fairy tale feel to it and a great theme for the deck. Excited to see how it plays out in the artwork. Now, of course, there's two different versions of the deck. This one with the brown tuck here. This is the cursed and then we have the crooked and the green tuck. A fitting name for the pair. We'll get a chance to look at both of them because there's definitely a lot of differences both in the characters and the artwork between them, but let's start off with the cursed version of the deck. All right, so starting off with the tuck case, it's done on a soft touch finish, nice kind of smooth feel to it, and a beautiful job of embossing. Really nice deep embossing on this one, and two colors of foil with the gold and the purple. A purple foil almost gives the brown tuck a purplish look, but it is a deep, deep dark brown. A uh, beautiful image of a key here, classic flourishes all around it with the cursed and the crooked written in the middle. Only knock on this one, I wish it wasn't such a big border around the edges. Kind of gives it a plain look and uh, I don't know, detract from the overall feel of the deck, which is a shame because that embossing and foiling really nicely done in the middle, but just so much empty space in this one, a little bit too much for me. In any case, turning the side here, you have fairy tale playing cards hinting at the theme. On the other side, by Marianne Larson. Bottom has a sticker here, so they uh, isolated Thunderstorm, who uh, distributes the deck. They usually do these horizontal stickers on the bottom, which I think is a great touch. Beautiful artwork on this one, and you can see the seal gives you the individual numbering out of the 3000 deck edition. Nice touch that I love from uh, Isolated Thunderstorm's decks. If you pick them up on their Kickstarter, they tend to try to give you the uh, pair of numbers. So both my decks are number 423 out of 3000. Just a nice touch that I love that they do. And then on the top here, limited edition, we just saw the numbering. And then the back, kind of like the back cover of a book, just has the name of the deck again, the curse and the crooked, and then a little bit of a description of the deck itself, mentioning once again that it's by Marianne Larson and that this is the cursed edition. Very simple flourishes here done in that gold uh, metallic foil but again kind of like the front a little bit too much empty space on this one uh, so you know wish there had been a little bit more detailing you do get some nice foil on the inner flap here more of those classic flourishes done in foil the cross keys in purple there on the in, uh, smaller inner flaps and some beautiful interior printing with the styling of like celtic knots all the way through beautiful purple foil all the way down all in all, some nice elements on the tuck, but overall, this is probably my least favorite part of the deck overall. Just too much empty space. So while it's a nice tuck, I think a lot more could have been done with it, but don't let that fool you because the cards really make up for it. So let's get into those. And we'll start off with the back design. All right, so here it is. Very much a classic storybook feel to it, uh, to me overall. A lot of vine work. You can see the leaves, the twisting plants. 
And of course, since it's a story of a forest that's overtaken by, you know, transformed trees and animals, you can see the eyes peeking out, kind of giving that unsettling feel as if the eyes are always watching you through the forest. It's a cool look to it overall, and almost kind of a disturbing look. They're almost uh, two-way faces in here. It's his eyes, you know, this way, you can kind of see those as like the eyebrows, but then on the flip side, they kind of make the bags under the eyes. Gives that uh, two-way feel to it, almost like you could look at it in either direction. I don't know, unsettling to me. Uh, I like the red colors on this one. The hue of red very much kind of gives that, I don't know, antique classic vibe. Great color choice on this one. And I love that it kind of contrasts, doesn't go with the browns and golds or even purples of the tuck, but going with a different color on the inside. There are some nice tiny accents of yellow and gold in here. Honestly, for me, not terribly needed. I think the red by itself looks nice enough. Uh, finishes out with a medium kind of poker border around the edge and uh, the uh, kind of off-white cardstock. All right, but now turning to the cards themselves. And we'll start off by looking at the four aces. And the power ace uh, pays tribute to the, I guess the hero or the anti-hero of our story. The Baron is uh, given a depiction here in the ace of spades. And this is him post-transformation. So you can see the vines creeping all over his face. And his almost terrified uh, face with the wide eyes there as he's being absorbed into the forest. Very cool look to it overall. The large spade pit has the arrows paying a uh, tribute to his past as a hunter, and then has the name of the deck and the addition at the top and the bottom. Like the addition of the uh, the pips on the four sides here, so the indices on all four corners, means that if you wanted to use this deck for gameplay, you could use it whether you're fanning left-handed or right-handed. So it's uh, equal opportunity, whichever hand you play with. Uh, nice. Uh, ornate storybook sort of font for the uh, indices in the corner and then custom pips not a lot of detail that you can make out there uh, but I think it's kind of modeled after the large spade pip in the center the other three aces are a bit simpler but do feature those big oversized pips and that I know, I'll call it Celtic inspired uh, embellishments there in the middle love the kind of weathering on this one to kind of give it the feel of almost like they're stamped on there a wood block or something like that so there's your four aces Black cards in classic black, red cards in that classic red color. Number cards all feature those custom pips as well with the little uh, embellishments in them, the kind of flourishes and details uh, and the indices in all four corners. But otherwise, nothing too special on the number cards, uh, but you get a chance to see all of them in turn. So there's your diamonds, smaller version of the pip that we saw in the Ace of Diamonds, and then into the clubs. A pretty classic layout across these, other than being a little bit smaller to kind of fit in there with the four indices in the corner. But nice playable pips overall. And there's your hearts. And then we get into the court cards. And the court cards are absolutely the highlight of this deck. Beautifully illustrated, all of them done in that sort of hand-drawn style. Marianne Larson is one of the most talented artists in my mind that's out there in playing cards. She does amazingly detailed work and you can really see that at play here beautiful shading all the way through rich detail in every inch of this one the king of spades this is the uh, baron pre-transformation so you can see him there with the bow in his hand looks like he's hunting the legendary stag and the detail of this two-way court is just outstanding all sorts of you know little bits and pieces that you can pick out the flowing beard even the uh, shock scared look in his eyes captured just beautifully. Love that the details kind of break the borders here. It gives you some kind of interesting shape to the card overall. And then has these little uh, odd looking borders on the side. I think that's meant to look good. Like if you use these in an uncut sheet, so it kind of runs from one card to the next, but in isolation, just in one card, it looks a little bit odd to me. I could have done away with that, but the detail on the courts just absolutely beautiful. So there's the Baron as the King of Spades. And then the rest of the cards represent some of the many characters that you'd find throughout the uh, transformed forest. Like here's a couple of the trees. So all the trees kind of have a mischievous role. So they'll, uh, I don't know, trick travelers in some way, maybe give them the wrong directions or something like that. Uh, you can see them there with that goofy little grin on their faces. And then there are two good trees in the forest. And you can see the pair of them here. This is Twig and Twog. Not sure if it's Twig and Twog or Twig and Twog. Uh, but the two of them actually try to help uh, travelers out in some way. So they're not like their mischievous brothers and sisters around the forest. Instead, they're a little bit more helpful. Uh, and you see them there with the uh, 
I don't know, kind of goofy grin on their own face as well. Very cool look to it. I love the branches spiraling out. Just a very cool look. Uh, some of the characters have a penchant for music, and so you'll see some of the minstrels throughout the deck as well. Uh, some of them playing guitars or playing uh, recorders or flutes, instruments that they made out of the wood of the forest. Uh, but a cool pair of cards there. Uh, definitely has kind of a, especially this one here, very much a where the wild things are sort of vibe. And then not all of the characters are quite as kind-hearted or nice. Some of them are dangerous and evil. And this is one of them. This is the water devil, one of the shapeshifters. Uh, these creatures would inhabit the lakes and the rivers in the area. Uh, and they would kind of jump out or sh chain forms in some way to attack travelers. But a very cool look to this one overall. Love the, uh, almost like that creepy, almost like an animal coming out of the tongue. Reminds me of Alien or something like that. And then the Queen of Clubs, this is one of the nocturnal demons. These are the demons that would travel through the forest looking for any travelers who have gone to sleep and then attack them as they rested. So very sinister look to that one. I think if you encountered that one, you definitely know it was not one of the good guys. And then lots of other fun characters as you go through. For example, this is, and I'm going to butcher this pronunciation, but it's Geniskuli. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, this was a troll who lived in the forest and would make tobacco out of mushrooms. You can see, he's definitely been smoking some of that tobacco himself. Very cool. I love the uh, hat here with the eyeballs all around it. Very cool look to it. Uh, this one, the, uh, the Jack of Hearts, this is Pap. Uh, he and his, uh, I guess, friend Plum, so Pap and Plum, were actually alchemists, and so Pap was the one who was designated to test all the different concoctions. You can see him there with the with the uh, belt full of potions around him. And then the King of Hearts. This was a fascinating character. Uh, this one, as the King of Hearts, uh, is a scare beast. These are uh, some of the animals of the forest. The animals were transformed into hulking beasts of their own, and they would run through the forest and terrorize and scare travelers all the way through. There's a scare beast, I don't know, you can see with the ears there, maybe that was, I don't know, some sort of squirrel or something like that that was transformed into this hideous beast. And then you get a uh, cool little pair of jokers here featuring some of the other characters, you know, imps and demons that you might find around the forest as the pair of jokers. Just really fun artwork. And it all culminates in what I think is the most beautiful pair of cards in the deck, the Diptych Jokers. So two extra jokers gives you the scene of the Baron here in the middle, middle as he's been transformed into one of the trees, and then some of the other trees of the forest in the background. Just a beautiful image spread across the two cards. It gives you a chance to see all that detail, every single stick and branch and leaf given just amazing attention all the way through. Just a great job on this deck. And that is it for the cursed edition of the deck. Beautiful overall, but there's one more deck to go. We have the cursed, now we have the crooked. The crooked on the face of it looks fairly similar, you know, has that kind of clunky feel to the tuck box overall, just like the cursed version did, uh, but this time done in a green soft touch and features kind of a bronze and gold two-tone copper foil or copper and gold foil. Really nice coloring to the foil. I love the uh, usage of like the trees and sort of that driving uh, force in the design. Overall, I like the design, but again, just like the other one, I wish it didn't have so much empty space in it. Uh, but same details on the sides, except of course done in green, slight differences on the tuck seal. Uh, and then the back gives you a little bit of a different story. This one, instead of being ad copy for Marianne, instead gives you a little bit about the story of the deck or the origins of those creatures in the forest that we've talked about. More great detailing on the inner flaps, this time with a Celtic knot symbol or kind of emblems there on the interior flaps. And then the interior here is again inspired by the trees. You can see that copper colored foil with the branches extending out of the interior of the box. Really nice interior for on this one. So there's the tuck box, but now let's check out the cards. And the cards have been given a completely new look, uh, starting with this really startling back design. It's a full bleed, so a borderless back design, and it's kind of a mural of some of the creatures in the forest. And as you peek through there, you may be able to make out some of the different characters, you know, some of the demons or the uh, the trees, they're called the crooked. Uh, there's the uh, that troll who made tobacco, makes his appearance on there. Just all sorts of little details, and really nicely done to keep this as a two-way back design as well. 
Love the idea of the borderless bag design. I think it really works well. And this is a fun one to just spend a lot of time looking at. You can make out all sorts of details. And of course, like most borderless designs, looks fantastic in a fan. Uh, but the back design, not the only thing that's changed. The faces are changed as well. And we get all new characters throughout this. Some of the same characters, a few of them are the same from the previous deck, but we get all new characters as well drawn throughout this one, starting with the two jokers, showing two kind of plant-based creatures. Uh, this is uh, one of the characters that traveled around with that tobacco-making troll. So you can see he's got mushrooms growing all over him. Maybe that becomes part of what uh, Jensukade uh, uses for his uh, tobacco. And then here's another one of those mischievous trees as the second joker. You also get a, a, a different uh, diptych joker on this one as well with the pair of uh, trees or at least the faces in the trees. So you can use it kind of facing away from each other or facing towards each other, that kind of serene and peaceful look on their face. Very, very cool artwork. And I, I always love a diptych joker and these are fantastic. And the cards themselves all feature a different look, but again, kind of the same themes overall. Still done in that sort of black and white hand-drawn style, but now all of the cards add this fantastic border around the edge. Lots of little implements that would kind of hint at some of the story elements. You'll see uh, kind of a pan, uh, pan playing here in the corner, uh, little columns, just a really nicely done look to it, and adds an entirely new dimension to the cards, which otherwise look pretty similar to what we saw before. Definitely the details get kind of crunched in a little bit more to fit in that center frame just because we have that huge border on the edges. Uh, so I would call this probably a little bit less playable of a deck, but a lot, uh, a lot of amping up the artwork on this one overall. So I don't know, up to you on which deck you like better. Uh, I am one for artwork and custom design. So for me, this crooked version of the deck really does it for me. Uh, but, you know, if you want something maybe a little bit more playable, the cr uh, cursed version may be for you. So there's your number cards. And then the court cards are changed up as well. So unlike the two-way courts that we saw in the first version of the deck, now we have one-way courts with the kind of portraits here, almost like this is a giant frame with a portrait in the middle. And an all-new set of characters. So some of these you won't have seen before, but they're the same types of characters. You'll see some of the trees. There's one of the few repeating characters. So there's the Baron. So the King of Spades in both decks, but this time just as a one way. Uh, but you'll see some of the trees. There's one of the minstrels, some of the demons, etc., cetera, who, uh, who were introduced to in the first version of the deck. But we'll see many of them, or at least some of their uh, counterparts or brothers, make an appearance in the uh, crooked version of the deck. Really beautiful. This is one of the unique characters from the second version of the deck. This is the bull logger. Uh, he's actually the enemy of the mischievous trees. And so it's this bull who was enchanted, became enraged at all the trees, and then spent his life walking around cutting the trees down with a giant ax. But very, very cool look to it overall. If you remember Pap from the first version of the deck, the potions tester, this is, uh, this is Pl or Pap yet again as the Jack of Hearts. There's another one of the demons. That's a really twisted looking one. And then finally, the shaman. This is sort of the uh, guide of the forest, if you will. The shaman uh, you know, has a series of concoctions and plants and things like that that can help travelers if you find them. So very cool look to the crooked version of the deck. You know, like I said, up to you on which one you like better, the cursed or the crooked. Uh, you know, I call cursed probably the more usable deck, but crooked the more artistic deck, which is why that one is the choice for me. But either way, I can't go wrong with this one. Fantastic artwork as always from Marianne. And I mean, just can't say enough about her skill as an artist. Can't wait to see what else she's got in the store. But anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this look at the cursed and the crooked. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews, more unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see. And I'll see you for the next one.